When you go on a major expedition, it's a good idea to have a carrot at the end. You have to fight. You, you fight and you fight, and you're, you're looking. You're looking to to get yourself um, to to that to that final river. My my lucky number is 22. So it's 22 rivers, 22 states, 22 months. And um, in Bismarck, North Dakota, I was given the ear tag of a the old aluminum ear tag of a cow that had, was number 22, and we. We affixed it to the front of my canoe, pushing, uh, looking forward. So when times would get hard in this life, as we all know they do, I would see the 22 looking forward and I realized, I would remind myself, this canoe needs to see all 22 rivers. And by God, I'm going to, I'm gonna make it, I'll take this canoe uh, all the way. As you go, as you go along, there are people big and small. This, the big one is right here in the second row. <laughs> this is uh, Madison, Indiana. You meet these characters, I, <laughs> incredible. I was trying to say, I can, I can do it myself. I, 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 I can bring the canoe onto my knee, I can sort of hobble it down to the river, and this young man and his young brother, they said, no, no, we're gonna help you. We're gonna help you, and help, help me, they did. I don't know, 20, 20 people came down to the water from Madison, it was so incredible. And, and um, like so many places, some people, they turn away, and they're crying, and they turn away because they know that the road ahead is so dangerous. We all know how dangerous the, the Ohio is, how, how massive and uh, how many lives are lost on that river. I pushed, I pushed my way up uh, to Cincinnati, and uh, Cincinnati, this was the first Major League Baseball park I was gonna get to and get into in about 10 years, having lived overseas for so long. Um, and what was cool was, I, I hadn't been into a baseball park again for those 10 years, and I, this was July the 4th, and I was going to make my way, I had tickets, I was going to make my way with, uh, with, with, with some hosts there I had met in North Dakota that live in Cincinnati, they were going to take me to the baseball game. And as I was on my way to the baseball game, um, something happened, my, my phone rang, this phone rang, this phone right here. And the voice on the other end of the line said, this is the Cincinnati Reds, and we would like for you to be a part of our program today. Would you be willing to do that? And um, going back in my mind to when I was 11 years old in Los Angeles, I had an uncle, my favorite uncle. He was, uh, he was in the, um, the Coast Guard. He was, a, he was a clown, he was a Shriner. He would, he would work the, 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 the kids the kids as well, and I would go as a little kid, and he would say, what animal do you want? And I would say, I want a giraffe. And he would, whoosh, he would, he would with the balloon, he would quickly uh, configure this giraffe, or a zebra, or whatever it was that he, he could do this. And he was friends with the, bat he lived in San Diego, he was friends with the batting coach of the San Diego Padres. And I would go to him, with him to the games all the time. And I love baseball, I love Topps baseball cards. I, I just, I loved, I loved, I lived and breathed baseball when I was a little boy. And one day he said, Neil, you have to come. I don't care what happens, you have to be here. Um, Jack Murphy Stadium, uh, Padre Stadium, because the Cincinnati Reds are coming, coming to town. And it's, uh, it was 1983, it turned, it turned into one of the final at-bats of Johnny Bench. And he said, you have to come and you have to witness this with me. And I said, I'll be there, I'll be there. And when we got, when we got there, the, the Padres were terrible. <laughs> they were just terrible. The, 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 this, beautiful, this beautiful American ballpark was always empty. But this day, it was full. It was throbbing, and it was full. It was full of electricity. And we couldn't have our seats down by the dugout. We were in the nosebleeds, and I can still see from, the, from home base. I was right up, right up at the top with my uncle, looking down, and they didn't play Johnny Bench. I was told as a kid, uh, I was told this is his final at bat, but it turned, looking at the history books, he was on his, his, his farewell tour. This was one of his final at bats, but definitely the final at bat for the Padres. And then seventh inning stretch, and people start to get antsy. And all of a sudden, everyone in unison starts to, starts to, starts to, 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 to take their heels and, uh, and, and in rhythm, it's a, uh, and with the chanting, it's, we want Johnny, we want Johnny. 
And then came the, 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 the announcer and he said, uh, now pinch hitting for the Cincinnati Reds, Johnny Bench. And Johnny Bench came out and we, we were already on our feet. Every, the whole stadium was on their feet. Johnny Bench came out, they never sat down. And I played baseball, I played Little League, and I knew how embarrassing it was to strike out. But uh, Johnny Bench, he, he, came, he, came to the, he came to home base, and there were three pitches, and there were three strikes. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter because it was, it was a moment in history. It was a moment where we all came together. It was a moment where he, he, he had to tip his cap three or four times out of the dugout. They wouldn't sit down. They wouldn't stop screaming. And I realized, as a little boy, I realized this is, this is not about the Reds. This is not about, definitely not about the Padres. And this is not even about Johnny Bench. This is about baseball. And this is about America's pastime. And this is about coming together. And this is something, this is a lesson that was, uh, that was just so powerful. So powerful for me. Um, I got to the stadium, and they, they brought me up on the stage. I got to introduce the, uh, in, in, introduce the, the expedition, the idea of July the 4th and Independence Day and Americana and the celebration of America as we celebrate the outdoors here today. It was something, it was something pretty cool. Uh, on, uh, people, people will ask, do the waterways actually connect? So there were 7,500 miles of which I was able to paddle about 7,000 miles. And I was able to, uh, to then portage um, 500 of those miles. And then I got to New York City at the very end. Um, while I was on the journey, it felt like it was only almost two years, it was, on, it was only two years, but it felt like I had always been on the journey, and it felt like I would always be on the journey, and as those miles counted down on the Hudson River, um, it was really important for me, uh, uh, um, it all sort of came crashing in, the understanding that when we as Americans, when we come together as a family, when we come together as a community, when we come together as a summit, when we come together as a nation, we can do anything. We can do anything that we put our eyes to. At the very end, it was important for me to, to, uh, to, to finish, the, finish the canoe journey with friends that I had made along the way together. So there are about 10 friends here, and, uh, and together at the very end, that very last day in New York City, it was a picture perfect. Uh, December 14th. It was just incredible. Uh, very little wind, and we all we, we all got together, and we all were able to circle the Statue of Liberty together. And then the second time around, my friends sort of spontaneously they stopped, and they said, "Neil, you 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 go ahead and uh, and, and and make your way forward." And as I looked up. As I looked up to that copper and 24 karat gold uh, flame, I, I, I'm such an idiot. I, I thought to myself in the beginning, I want to earn. I want to try to earn this rarefied view. I want to see it from the American side first, and then I want to, I want to get there, and I want to, I want to experience it. And I realized that I was a fool. Um, for the very first time, as I looked up to that fire, at first I was celebrating, and then I was sobbing. But there was a press boat with cameras in my face, and I was a little bit embarrassed to sob properly, so I was sobbing inside. And um, when I looked up the idea of illumination, I never used that term in regards to this journey. It came crashing in. I, again, I come from Hollywood, and I see, I see an end of the story like rapid flashes, like the end of your life. In rapid flashes, you see, if you've been a good person, you see the good things. If you've been a bad person, you might see the bad things, like Scrooge. But, uh, but, but I saw the good things, and immediately, all the faces, all the faces, the smiles, the well wishes. There's people here today that I met on my journey. Um, just, it was so beautiful. Reflected, reflected uh, uh, in that fire. 
um, from the very beginning of my journey, from Astoria, Oregon, right the way through to New York City, that fire and that illumination of the people was with me the entire time. And I, as the would-be traveler, was so lucky to be along for the ride. Uh, thank you very much.